Steve. Welcome to the Group X podcast, mate. It's so good to see you and have you on my show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm a big fan. <laughs> I love this. I love it. So uh, we'll kick it off as I have done with the last couple as well. One word that describes you. Oh, um, loyal. Oh, hello. I'm, I like this one already and I think I can tell where <laughs> this is going to go. So I like that. Now, a second one. Uh, have you got your mobile phone near you? Yes, I do. Yep. Who yep. was the last person? Who was the last person that texted you, and what did it say? Oh, uh, the <laughs> last person who texted me was Chids, actually Michael Chidley, and yep. he said, "Any chance you can cover my call for me on Friday at Cannington?" <laughs> nice. And, and then, what... and then the second one says, "Please." <laughs> <laughs> and have you responded yet? Yes, I have. And I said, of course, and I knew that you were going to ask me because we'd already talked on the weekend about how he might need me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. So let's lead me into our first question I want to ask you. How did you get into the fitness industry? Where does it begin? Whew. Well, um, uh, actually, I just had my anniversary, my 15-year anniversary of, um, of working Happy in the anniversary. fitness industry. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. <laughs> Um, so I think, I don't know, maybe like a lot of group fitness people or fitness people in general, um, I have a bit of a background in sport or I was pretty serious about my sport back in the day. And that's what led me into the gym as a very young teenager, like probably a little bit, um, a bit unusual. It was quite a long time ago. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, quite unusual at that time. I remember I had to really specifically get permission to be allowed to train in the gym. Yeah. Um, at a fairly young age as part of cross training for my for my sport so um, I've always you know loved fitness and and been interested in it but um, when I retired from my sport at 17 I then um, you know went and had a proper adult life and I didn't come back to it until I was 30 so or in my 30s yeah. um, and I was just your average front row participant friends with all the instructors <laughs> Um, and I was actually on, I was on maternity leave from my real job. So I used to be a bank manager and um, oh, wow. I was on maternity. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I'd been in the bank for a decade, quite a, yep. quite a shift. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, and I had two young children and I still had, um, you know, the bank's pretty good. I had two years maternity leave and I still had 12 months left. And I thought, what am I going to do with my time? Um, how about, this sounds really terrible, but if I work at the gym, I'm going anyway. So I'm going to the gym every day. My kids are in the crash every day, but I can get paid to go to the gym. I'll get a free membership, free childcare. Um, yep. And then, you know, maybe I'll go back to my real life one day later and I just never went back. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's fantastic. I love that yeah. realisation when we're going to the gym and then we go, hey, you mean I can get paid to do this? Mm. Hello? Yeah. I mean, I smile when I go to the gym and I'm happy when I go to the gym, not saying you weren't, but I'm just saying for me, especially it was, I was in telco and I was smiling in the morning and I was smiling in the afternoon. That was when I was at the gym. And as when I realized, Hey, I can, I can be paid to smile. I can be paid to do yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had, um, you know, the great experience of having these incredible instructors who, made it such a positive experience for them. And I sort of hadn't told anybody, but I'd said to my husband, you know, I think I think I wouldn't mind doing that. And um, I hadn't told anyone. And I think the following week, I had three instructors say, have you ever thought about being an instructor? Um, um, yep. So it was obviously really? meant to be. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, so take me back yeah. to when you said you're in your early, your, 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 your teens, mm -hmm. and you said you're 17, you, you, you retired or you stopped. What were, you doing? what were you doing? What sort of sport was it oh, that you're in, involved in? Can I just remind you that this is the uh, this was between the mid '80s to the mid '90s. Yeah. Um, yep. And <laughs> I was an artistic roller skater, so I represented yeah, WA cool. for ten years in a row, and also I was in the junior Australian team um, for part of that time as well. So yeah, so I was very serious about my sport, and um, yeah, competed at a relatively like, high level. Yeah. I, I was tennis. Yeah, I was tennis. I was the boy out there wearing all white, playing tennis. You know, and I had a mm -hmm. massive font of hair back back in those. I did have hair back in those days. I should tell everyone. <laughs> it was, it was yeah. hair there. Uh, but next to our tennis courts was a roller rink, 
and wow. they had comps and they had all that kind of stuff that would go yep. on there. And, and I think I only ever went in there maybe three or four times when we had a school disco or something go on. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, people know I can't dance, so there's no chance I was going to be getting on roller skates back in the eighties, <laughs> nineties either to do any of that. Mm-hmm. But mate, that's a skill. Well done. That's fantastic. Yeah. I've, um, look, I knew we we actually had a rink close by um, as I was growing up and it did close and then it was just at a local rec centre. But that was, you know, sort of late 90s, early, oh, sorry, late 80s, early 90s, Friday night, is you went skating. That's what you did. You went to the skating session, um, yeah. which was quite different to what I did, but it was it was very popular. Um, it was, yeah. And I knew from a very young age, you know, I sort of, I won my um, I won tiny tops at state at state championships in 1985, and I was seven, and I went to the national titles by myself with just my coach. Um, and then yeah, awesome. I, just, I was I knew exactly what I wanted to do, and I very yeah. single mindedly trained at quite a serious level for sort of that ten year period. So yeah, I love the fact that that if you look at it in a way, you were not center of attention. That's not what I'm trying to say here, but you were in, you were in the spotlight back then. You were you were out on display doing stuff and people were watching you so i think when if you look at it as a group exercise instructor we're up on stage yeah mm-hmm. we're in we're in front of people people are looking at us so you've obviously that side of your life has, has started very early and you felt comfortable with it of an early age mm-hmm. as well why, why did you stop at 17 was that just you know just, you got to the why? age of going, yeah. yeah well uh, you know it was out on friday <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, look, it was year 12. Um, I had exams coming up. I actually won um, the national titles again in my division um, yep. and I intended to have a break because um, I'd never, I'd actually never had a break in 10 years and wow. um, thought I would take a break and then life got in the way. You know, I finished school yeah. and I got a job and yeah, it just, it wasn't, it's not the cheapest sport either. So, you know, yep. it would, didn't seem like it was possible for that to, to continue for me. So, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Well done. As again, well done on that. I think that's <laughs> brilliant. It's a different story than one that I haven't heard before. And I, I like hearing, you know, those mm. ones. Especially when it's stuff from the 80s and 90s, man. That's my era. So, you know. <laughs> I mean, I've fully that. just given away my age, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Look, I'm still a bit older, so we'll just, we'll just, yeah. We're just 21. <laughs> 21 forever. That's all we need to yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is the Group X Podcast. So you went into the gym, you, you got your permission, you're in there doing that. Was it group exercise or was it just gym floor doing circuit stuff? No, no, just gym floor. Um, but uh, I don't know if I just have a really good memory, but I remember my group fitness journey so, so clearly. Um, so I, you know, and it's funny because I remember thinking when I worked at the bank, imagine having a job where you can just sort of like wear sneakers to work every day. How great would that be? And I kind of just realized a few weeks ago that that's me now. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, no, I, um, you know, obviously I was very active. I trained in the gym and then, um, I did aerobic old style, aerobic old style in the mornings at home. And when I was yep. in, uh, in my senior school years, we had a new phys ed teacher and she was a dance teacher. And we put together, she put together like a, um, a little like team aerobics type performance group um, that I did. So I kind of knew what that was, um, but it wasn't yep. until much later, um, late nineties it was, I was going to, oh gosh, I'm go- was going to aqua aerobics. Um, yep. And I walked into walked into the rec centre and sort of off to the left there was this tiny little um, glass studio, really small, and there were people in there punching and kicking the air. And I thought, gee, that looks fun. And uh, it was body combat. And so the next week I went and did that class, and yep. uh, it was actually barracuda, which I'm pretty <sighs> sure is body combat number one. One, yes. Wow. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so the first week I went once and the next week I went twice. And then within a couple of weeks, I found body step and then body pump. Um, And then life happened again. And it wasn't until uh, it was the beginning of 2006, I joined a gym. And on the tour, they showed me the studio and I was like, yeah, I know what body pump is. I know all that. And then there was this tiny little black room in the back corner um, with some bikes in. Oh, that's RPM. But you know what? You don't want to do that until, you know, you've got to be fit. If you want to do that class. I love that. And, um, you know, here's me, like, with a 11-month-old baby thinking, well, how that's going to be? Like, 
really like i feel like this is going to be my thing yeah and um yeah loved it from the very first i know the instructor i know the release it literally changed my life from there so yeah i'm loving everything you're saying right now you've just taken me <laughs> on a journey from barracuda from from combat number one the mm. music i mean i don't know what the music's like in combat these days but the music back then was was fantastic because i think it's it, again that's showing my age now when i say that but it's the music that i really gelled with you know mm. even though combat back then had the the bells and the whoosh and all the the sound absolutely. effects absolutely that were going on that was uh, which, the best which, bit. Yes, it was. You knew what you knew what was coming. You knew when it was. It's, it's still the same with Radical Fitness these days because obviously the mm -hmm. guys that find um, combat uh, have gone over and, and um, are doing. You know, Nathaniel and Gabby are doing uh, Radical Fitness stuff. But it's uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and no, I believe it's still the same. They've still got the same sort of sound effects going on with that. But that's brilliant. Yeah. I love those stories of of early days in the industry, and I think there's so many of us that are you know. I know there's people that tune in that listen that have been in the industry for a good 15 to 20 years that remember, you know, the early releases and remember what it was like back mm -hmm. in the day, walk into yeah. a gym, you were given that museum tour around the, the gym, you notice of, yeah, this is this, this is this, whatever it may be. And so often I remember hearing, yeah, that's the cycle studio. You need to be fit to go in there. It's like, no, 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 people, you go in there to get fit. You don't need to be fit to then go in there. That's not the pinnacle and the top of it all. You you just go in. You just go and you have a whole lot of fun and you, no matter what it is, whether it's in the main group X room or, or the, the cycle studio, you just get in there and have a hell of a lot of fun. 100%. It's, and I think that's what it is. Obviously, the movement to music is probably what drew me in because that's what artistic roller skating is. You know, you perform a routine uh, to the music, you perform choreography to music. Um, right. So, you know, the room is black and the light, you know, there's blue lights and the instructor's like, woohoo, and the music's amazing. And um, yeah, I was hooked from that very first RPM class for sure. Let's be realistic though. I think you're probably hooked from uh, Aerobics All Star. <laughs> well, yes, only because I wanted like the matching, you know, I love yes. I their outfits. Like the, the scrunch socks and the tight it, it was all, That was my dream to wear like that matching outfit. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember it was 6 a.m. every morning it was on and I remember yep. you know probably probably the last couple of years of high school it was on and you were it was on TV because you woke up you were mm -hmm. watching whatever was on TV as you were you sitting there having your cereal or whatever it was and that yep. was that that's that was, what on, was on yep. TV and Probably subconsciously, that's where it sort of started for me, but I didn't realise that, that mm. you know, group yep. exercise was going to be a massive part of uh, of life. Absolutely. So, <laughs> yeah. So what was the first program that you trained up in? Uh, RPM. Yeah. Brilliant. So I had, yeah, I just had my 15-year anniversary for RPM. It's, yeah, my, my first love. So, yep. um, yeah. I who, mean, was your, who was your trainer for? Robin Fermoil was my trainer. Yep. In WA, yep. That yeah, was RPM 40, doing? RPM 40, and yep. my track was Track 6 Adelante. Ah. Oh, Banger. What a track, yes. <laughs> it, it's funny, you know, Lee, Lee Smith's obviously um, with Body Bike stuff, he's doing a whole lot of, uh, well, they're doing their RPM 100 over here in the next couple of weeks, and um, he's been asking people for the favourite tracks, you know, favourite release with forever one, two and going all through mm -hmm. and the amount of bangers that have just come up that have reminded me of how good some of the music has been. It's just, and that Adelante is just a, yes. See, there, I say that and it casts my mind back to the days of North Sydney for me, where it was, it was the, you know, in my, my late twenties, early thirties and just having a hell of a lot of fun with, mm. with doing. Yeah. And it's still, oh. it I think the one thing with RPM in particular, I mean, a lot of the programs, but RPM is it still translates. You can still go back and do those yep. tracks. They're still bangers. They're still hard work. Yep. They're still, you know, they meet the grief. They're still amazing all this year, all these years later. So how did you find training? How did you find your, your RPM module? Um, well, I mean, I had the most amazing instructors. So I felt, um, very, and I was friends, you know, I was a proper group fitness groupie, you know, I had my bike and I knew all the instructors and we used to chat for 20 minutes after and, um, yep. but um, I remember one of the instructors who was my friend, um, she encouraged me to, you know, when I said, you know, I think I'm going to do it, she's like, yeah, and I, I've got a feeling she might have endorsed me in the, the group 
the GFN um, yep. said to me the next week, hey, I, I heard a rumour um, that, you know, you're doing your training. And to be honest, um, and she'll laugh when I say this, um, I was actually quite, well, we all were, I was quite scared of her at the time because she was an incredible instructor and, you know, she's, uh, she's actually one of my best friends. I've spoken to her on the phone three times today. You know, she's, um, she became my mentor and is now a very good friend of mine. And, um, but I was quite scared of her and I was like, oh, I don't even know if she knows my name. You know, I used to do her classes and she's like, oh, I heard you're doing the, the module and here's me probably have not really asked the club for, for, for permission or if they'll, I'm just like, oh yeah, I'm going to go do this. Um, the training was good. Robin was a really tough trainer. Um, and I think she was sort of making it her mission to, you know, um, I knew my choreography. I was very well prepared. Um, so it was a matter of, you know, this is back in the day of the DVD kit. I'd actually bought a new Discman because I didn't have one, um, to listen to my track when I got there. Um, But I felt, I, you know, if I'm honest, I felt quietly confident. Of course, unsure of what, what was going to happen, but I'd been recommended by instructors. I knew that my technique was pretty good. I knew that I could remember choreography. Um, so it was about going there and learning. And I had yeah. such great examples. You know, I had such great examples in the instructor's classes that I went to that it wasn't too much of a stretch. Yeah. That's the thing I love, and, and from chatting to most of the guests that I've had on the show as well, the the people that are trainers and presenters or, or predominantly just the trainers that everyone's experience with training on the, when they've done their own training or when they're actually delivering training we're there to teach we're there to learn we're there to it's a it's a it's an environment that is very um friendly very it's not da- it's, it, it comes across daunting at first if you've never done it but when you get in there it's just it's education it's just learning some people can find it very overpowering and and the amount of people that I've seen and, and helped through sitting there bawling their eyes out from day one to then day two and not I can't come back and that kind of stuff it's like guys you can do this you know that our aim is not to not to fail you our aim is to help you pass to actually yeah. get out there and do this because we all know the I suppose the benefits we get from when we're up there doing it and helping other people, you know, get through their journey of fitness and that kind of stuff. And we don't, you're never expected to, to walk out of, you know, day one or day two module training and be an absolute gun that you can get up on stage, you know, on Monday and go, yes, we now this, maybe if you've been yeah. doing it for 16, 20 years and you're learning a new program, it might be a little bit different, but for your first ever program going in, um, you know, it's, it can be really daunting, but it's a very rewarding process i think at the same time when you 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 learn a whole lot of new skills mm, absolutely. You learn about yourself that you didn't realize that that you know it's like, oh wow I, I i can do that or oh wow yeah right I, I, that, that all falls into place and i think the processes that les mills have uh are not going to set anybody up to fail no and that's something i talk about in initial module training i'm like you won't actually believe this but this little booklet and this masterclass and all of these and this training is going to give you literally every single thing you need to be successful. There's no, you don't have to guess anything. There's it, it, there's no tricks. It's just do this and yeah. you'll be great. <laughs> it's finding your way to deliver that message is mm. I think that that's, it, it's, that's probably the hardest thing when you look at module training is, is finding you in that experience to go, okay, this is what I've got to do. I've just got to find my style to actually show it out because, yeah, I, I've I've mentioned this before. While I I Pete Manuel was was, yeah, Pete and Shannon were were my two that helped me through a whole lot of stuff. And I started being a little Pete. I started being a little Shannon. Well, not little because I'm a bloody unit, but I started <laughs> mimicking, mimicking those guys. And you know, it wasn't until I as I said before, if you've, I've I found me in that process, and that's when my class numbers started to increase and improve because. I just relaxed. It's like, Tony, you don't yeah. need to be Shannon. Just, there's one Shannon. We sure as hell don't need two. And the same with Pete. Pete was a singer. Pete was from the the, the theatre type style, you know, of background. That was him. I was trying to do it and I just didn't fit. It was, you know, yeah, okay, yep, you're a little Pete, but how about you be you? And once yeah. you finally, once I finally got that and put it all together, and I think that's what I'll try and share now with, with new instructors coming through, that guys, just be you. Don't try and be another Christy. Don't try and be another Ian. Don't try and be another anybody else. Just learn from the person that's in front of you teaching you and the brother from the trainer, but put your flair into what you're doing. And that's when it all falls into place and members love you for who you are. 
Yeah, I think that you, when you're yourself, you attract the people who like you. Nobody, not everybody's going to like everybody. Okay. You know, like you're you're not for everybody, and that's hard because you know, obviously, we're doing this because we want to help people. So we feel like if you know, if someone doesn't like us, we feel like maybe that's a missed opportunity, for instance. But what yeah. we need to focus on are the people who actually do like us. So rather than trying to pretend to be somebody else, if you just be yourself, you're going to attract those right people. And they'll tell you that. I come to your class because I like the way you do this. Yeah. yeah? Or, yep. you know, and uh, that's when you – it takes a while to learn that, I think. I think in, there's – it's quite an expensive process um, to learn to be an instructor. And I always think that the instructors, they make it look so easy, right? You go to a class and they just, and, and it's like, I mean, really, how hard they look. They just, you know, they just get up, they sit on their bike and they put the mic on, turn the music on and boom, and all this stuff comes out of their mouth. But actually it's quite a structured process, you know, and um, that can sometimes be a shock, I think, in initial module training. Maybe, maybe that's something that I think about. Like, I feel like I was pretty well prepared but it was yep. understanding the reasons why the instructors yeah. said this or why they did this. And then initial module training was like, oh, oh, yeah. I see. That's, that's why they said this or that's why they say it in this way. Um, and more of that comes with experience. And I think the more training you do, you you hold on to that a little bit more. You know, and it, firstly, you go, you do an initial module, you go teach and you're teaching, 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 and, and then you sort of fall into your own rhythm. And it's not until you go train in another program or you do some type of up to be like, oh, I haven't been, haven't, I've been missing this opportunity in layer two coaching yeah. or, or whatever. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's that constant learning all the time. What's new in fitness? The Australian fitness industry news and commercial gym equipment suppliers website designed to provide fitness industry professionals with knowledge and information to make better informed business decisions. Yeah. Enjoy, enjoy the, the, enjoy the journey. And as, as Bill Scully said the other day, trust the process. Mm, yeah. It's there definitely. for a reason, you know, go through it and, and be, just be present in what you're doing because it's you, it's your journey. As you mm. said, you know, if the, I, 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 I so vividly remember walking in covering a class in North Sydney and a girl that was sitting in the front row, she'd already got in there 20 minutes early, set herself up. I walked in, walked in on, got up on stage and she said, oh, are you teaching? And I said, yeah, and she got up and she walked out and, you know, it, it kills you. It absolutely has any instructor that's had it happen. You just sort of go, oh, right. Oh, there's, there's wind out of my sails gone. It's like, oh shit. Right. Oh yeah. Cool. And just before you're about to hit play and go for 45, 50, 60 minutes, whatever it is, mm. it, you just feel like shit, but you get through it. You know, you're yeah. not, as I said, you're not everyone's cup of tea and, yeah. and that's okay. That's completely fine. You know, those that don't like you won't come, but you'll find those, as you said, those that do like your style and like your, your way will come along. And it takes time to get that as well. You can't be a brand new instructor and then be comparing yourself to someone that's been doing it for 10 or 15 years and wondering why, oh, hang on, Christy's class is full, but I've just started and I'm only getting two people. Mm, well, yeah, 100%. What's, what's going on there? You know, it's it's that the whole and that that's I'll lead on to a segue for a second. But instructors that are in a peak time slot that think they're amazing. Mm. Mm -hmm. If you're an amazing instructor, let me put you on the shittest time slot I've got in my club, and let's see what you can do over there. Because I'll be be honest, and there's probably people on annoy when I say this, but a monkey could teach five thirty on a Monday. If five thirty on a Monday is your peak time slot where everybody's in the gym, yep, it matters probably about three percent on who's up, who's up on that stage, but people are going to be coming in and they're going to be going, yep, cool, because that's the time they train, that's the program they do. Yep, happy days. Yep. I would love love getting those gun instructors that think they're amazing that do that class and go, hey, my Thursday night, 5.30 time slot's the one struggling. Can I get you over here? Mm. Oh, but Tony, I don't teach Thursday night. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right, late night shopping. That's right, I remember now. That's yeah, right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm busy that night. <laughs> hey, is late night shopping still a thing in Perth? Uh, yes, because we're very backwards, you know, our clothes. Are, our, oh, we're, we're actually open till nine. Oh, no, we're not actually. The supermarkets are open till nine, Monday to Friday. Um, but, yeah, the yep. other shops are only Thursday night. Yeah, so, yeah, Thursday night's still late do night you, shopping do you, in Perth. You go late night. Have you, how long has it been since you've been late night shopping? 
Uh, well, I'm at work, Tony, so teaching group okay. fitness on a Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> You're teaching that 5.30 class. Brilliant. Yes, no, I love that. <laughs> I was talking yeah. to Rachel about that the other day, about late night shopping. And we just, like when, you know, growing up when I was in pre uh, not preschool, which got, um, primary school and, and then high school, we you know, Thursday night would be like, yeah, okay, yeah, we're going to have dinner or we'll go out or we'll go out for dinner or whatever. And it was Thursday night. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've done that probably for the last 20 years. No. I can't remember well, going out late night shopping. For a lot of people who who work a, you know, a big girl job, like a proper full-time job, maybe that is the time that you have. But obviously I've had a flexible job for 15 years. Um, yep. So yep. it's not necessary for me to, to yeah. shop on Thursday night. No, it, so. it, it was a conversation around, you know, attendance at a gym and, and it was always that, oh, don't put too many classes on a Thursday night because people won't mm. come. Mm. I don't agree with that. I, I really mm. don't. I don't, you know, I think there's not everyone's going to go late night shopping. You know, there's still going to be a good proportion of your or you know, percentage of your demographic that are in your area that would come to a six thirty class on a mm. Thursday night because they're not going to like me. They're not going to go late night shopping. You know, no, I, I could be right. completely wrong with yeah. that, but but I think there's more people <laughs> that don't go late night shopping than do these days that that would be members of gyms that would you know if there was a class on later put it on. Don't just go, oh yeah, we're only going to put one class on at 5.30 and then we don't do anything else. Mm, yep. Mm. Okay. I think it's very yep. um, club dependent probably, you know, depending yeah. on the demographic and yeah. 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 Mm. So <laughs> we've got, you've, you've, you've told me about your, your module training. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to ask you a question about module training specifically for you when you did it. Mm-hmm. What was the most interesting thing that you remember doing Back there. So re- try and remove your trainer mode mm. for a second mm-hmm. and go back. What was it that, that really sort of captivated you or what, what you did during your training that was like a standout point, like, yeah, this? Um, I, pr- I mean, obviously it was very physical. Um, you know, the modules were pretty big. Like my body part module had 20 people on it and three trainers and it was three days in a row. Yep. Um so that was very, very physical. Uh, I definitely have to say probably, for me personally, it was the coaching. Yep. Um, the coaching side of it. Um, and maybe probably the, probably the biggest thing I had is sort of the connection. I think when I first became an instructor, as much as I wanted to help people, it was more like this is actually going to fit in with my life and this is going to be a cool thing to do, like free gym membership and I'm yep. going to get paid to go to the gym. And um, and then all of a sudden you, you sort of have this feeling that's actually really not. That, that that's not what it's about at all yeah, <laughs> and, um, yeah uh, yeah probably that whole connection thing about you know i already i probably knew that because i had such a community in my gym um yeah so the members yep. that i used to train with back then before i became an instructor some of them still do my classes today 15 years later Brilliant. so yep. i always i i knew it but i just i i guess i hadn't really thought about that connection yep. thing as much. Yeah. 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 What about now as a trainer? What's the, I mean, mm. I know you've got to deliver the whole course, but is there, mm. is there one area of the training that you really emphasize with your trainees when they come in? Is there one area where you not, not enjoy more than the others? Cause that's not what I'm trying to get across, but is I'm just trying to understand, is there, is there one area that you focus on a little bit more that you feel is a bit more important as a newbie when they're first out there? Because, I mean, nailing the basis is really important, but one of my real passions is um, positive motivational language and um, in coaching and in, and in the fitness industry. And I find that there's still a lot of instructors out there, and this is no shade on them, but there's still a lot of that really old school, you know, um, no pain, no gain, um, all of those, you know, when we're trying to, like how we try to motivate people. And I think people sort of fall into this, habit of I want you to do this and I need you to do this and um, I think you can get people to train really hard uh, if they're doing it for for their own reasons not because the, yep. the trainer's yelling at them right so yep. if we can just switch our language slightly so obviously it's not something we go into a great detail in in initial module training because that's not you know not something that they're being assessed yep. on but I do always like to bring it up when we go into that motivational 
you know, obviously when in connection, we talk about connection and motivation and, and, and how we're going to connect with those people. And layer three coaching, we talk about motivation and inspiration. And, um, you know, people will often say, hey, you know, um, I know you can do better than this, add more resistance. Or, you know, they, they sort of hear a lot of that out in the gym. And I'm like, but what if we said, if you're feeling great today, how about you try a little more and see how that feels? Or, you know, or yep. could you? could you go a little faster or why don't you or let's do this together instead of I yep. want you to train as hard as you can. So it's, hard, it's not yeah. about it's, you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I love and, that. I, that's, that's absolutely, I love it. It's brilliant because it's, it's, it's taking it away from you as the instructor. I want you to do this. You know, I need mm -hmm. you to, and I don't want you to, or need you to do anything. Yeah. I would like yeah. you to do what you can do right here, mm -hmm. right now. Mm. And that, as you said, that change of language is so, so important that I think you're right. As you said, as you said brand new instructors, it's, it's something that they will get to, something they should aspire mm. to get to in the way their language mm. is at first. Get the basics out. Yep. Throw it out there, stand up, sit down, do, you know, whatever it may be. We're going to be doing this. I need you to feel this or however it may be until you're at that stage where you're comfortable in your own teaching mm. that the language that you use and what comes out of your mouth isn't so much about, oh, you should feel that. How about, you know, are you feeling it in? Yeah. Or mm -hmm. you should feel it in not so much a, like Rachel and I were talking about the other night, a throwaway comment that, that is you know, in those hamstrings. How about say in your hamstrings? Mm -hmm. yeah? While yeah. there's, there could be 20 or 30 people in front of you, what you say should still be directed at one person. Mm -hmm. Because there's one person listening. Yep. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's I'm, really, I'm glad with you the brought that up. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's a, I don't know if it answers your question really, because it's not it's not pivotal to um, being becoming certified, right? It's it, it's yep. not. No, it, but it's still. I think that's a good takeaway for any instructor where at any yeah. level, you know, mm. to to be able to realise that guys, not about you. Yeah, mm. and when you realise it's not about you, it'd be make it about them your language and everything and your everything changes in the way that, yeah. that you, you know, that there was a post that I put up on, uh, on, on the group X Facebook page the other day. And the, the response that someone wrote was, um, you know, learn their names and use it. Mm. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah. The easiest thing to actually get more people into your classes is to learn their names, say their names, use their names, you know, know who the people are that are in front of you and connect with them. And it's so true. Yeah. There's, there's, to me, there's a hell of a lot more, but when you look at that one thing, that's vital for any instructor. Guys, if you don't know who's in front of you, get to know who's in front mm. of you. As yep. you said before you started, you know, you'd hang around after class for 15, 20 minutes chatting to those instructors. They knew you. Yeah, they yeah. were making it. It's, you know, it's, it's that make, make sure you rock up 10 or 15 minutes before class. Hang around for 10 or 15 minutes after. You know, the, the bullshit of people saying, oh, we're not paid to do that. Sorry, you are. Mm. <laughs> yep. Just do it. You know, that's what's going to help your numbers to increase your attendance in your class. Yes, for the gym, but it's you. It's your what you're doing in there. And surely people want more people, more numbers, more attendance mm. in their class. Right? Let's just Absolutely. rock it up. Don't just rock up for six people. I mean, we do, but you know, it's much better when you've got double that or triple that in your class rather than just the the six there. There's more atmosphere going on. Mm. Yeah, well, it yeah. is. You know, it's a group. It's a group thing. It's not one on one training. Yeah. yeah, so it's fun. Yeah. It's fun when yeah. the class is busy. Now, tell me, have you had an experience where you've had someone really, and, and I don't want you to show names because that's not what this is about, but come through <laughs> module training and it's an absolute debacle. They just don't get it. It's like they don't know their left from their right. Have you had that experience? Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if it's an RPM thing, but... I have a high proportion of people coming to do their very first certification for RPM. So yep. in any in every any given module, the majority and more than the majority, sometimes 80, 90 percent, sometimes I'll have a group where they're all brand new. Um, wow. So I love hearing that. Yeah, yeah. And that's you know, that's been my experience in the last three years. I might have said if I've got nine people on a module, maybe one of them certified in another program and the rest are all brand new. So <sighs> Um, it creates an interesting training space because you're starting from scratch. Yeah. They yep. know, they, and, and as I said, they go to these classes and they see instructors on stage and go, well, look, 
I mean, how hard can it be? You stand up, sit down, go fast, go slow. That's that's RPM, right? It's not that hard. <laughs> um, yeah. And because you know the quality of the quality of instructors out there is so high, they're they're like, well, God, surely I could do that. And then yep. they come to initial model training and all of a sudden you're like, okay, you've got to do this and you've got to do this and you've got to do this. And there's quite a lot of boxes to tick. And they're like, yep. oh, I thought you just got up there and just said stuff. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I have had a few experiences where um, it's taken a number of uh, a number of opportunities to, to get across the line in the end, you know, yep. and which is, totally okay because yes. not everybody yes. is good to go in eight weeks you know yes. um yep. it's it's a huge time commitment it's a huge financial commitment you know most people have other things in their life um yep. and uh you know if i was to say one thing i think and i've discussed this with lots of other people is that i feel like even though um you know, I, I said that joke that I'm not sure my my GFM really knew that I was I was like, hey, I'm going to initial module training, and she sort of endorsed me, not really knowing me very well, um, but I was very well prepared, and I feel like there's a lot of people who come to um, initial module training not actually knowing anything that is about to happen, um, yep. and I feel like we do them a little bit of a disservice in that way. I think there could be a little more responsibility when you're endorsing someone to make sure that they're going to have a positive experience. Yep. And whilst they absolutely come to learn um, at initial module training, um, you know, it, we can set them up for success by making sure that it's going to be a positive experience for them. So do they have great technique? Are, you know, are they on time? Because it's, there's such a lot of information for them to learn in a short period of time, if their technique is 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 not where it needs to be that's that's going to that's going to be their focus and then they're not able to take on you know yeah. all of the coaching elements or or all of the other things and it just makes it a much harder process for them yeah. so, so, so for yeah. those of you that are listening that are rpm looking to go and do rpm the only thing i will say is resistance mm. use it yep don't fake it use it mm. especially in track Especially if, if Christy pulls out Atalante as a track for you, just put <laughs> resistance on. <laughs> put resistance oh, on. That's it. The... It feels so good. Okay, riding on the beat with good racing resistance feels so good, and you can't understand that until you actually go there. You know. That was the the one thing that I remember because I I mentioned here before. There's a lot of a lot of the uh, Les Mills trainers were at Fitness First North Sydney where I was inducted into this industry and mm -hmm. I got to shadow with a lot of instructors and I got to even just be in their classes and they would turn around and say, tone, more resistance, more resistance, especially in track six. You know, I, mm -hmm. I obviously had this thing of my legs, I'm, I'm a unit. And as I've said many times, you know, my legs wanted to move, but I was, I think I was always a little bit afraid to put too much resistance on because, you know, oh, how much is enough? How much isn't enough? You know, it was put it on. You'll know mm -hmm. when you need to back it off. Yeah. Mm. Don't think oh, I might get, I might put it on, throw it on. And you'll know if your legs slow down too much, back a bit off mm. until you're at that stage of being able to push. And that was, I think one thing that I'd like to pass on to instructors these days is, is don't be afraid to go there. Mm. Push oh, it. You know what? The change is going to happen. Know. Yeah. Yeah. That feeling yeah, when you hit that spot, that sweet spot of the beats, right? The resistance is right. My energy is right. It's all, hello, gets mm. you to shut up in track six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, please shut up in track six. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Group X Podcast. So please true, do. so true. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how do, you, how do you learn choreography? What's your, your mm. way of learning choreography? Um, well, I was... So I'm still 15 years later when my download dropped, I'm like, yes. And I watched the video straight away. Um, yep. But I only watch it sort of once. Um, I might go back to it if there's something I, you know, probably less so in RPM. My other programs, I, I might watch it more, but RPM, I just want to watch it once and see, yep. you know, if there's any great cues that, that really land or, you know, I want to see what they're wearing and all that kind of stuff. So I always like watch the masterclass straight away. Um, and then I put it away and I just listen to the music nonstop for as long yep. as I can. Um, 
So it's in the car and, you know, when I'm doing my grocery shopping and it's just, it's always on. So I just listen to the music over and over and over and over and over. Um, yep. So I know the lyrics and I know every beat drop. And, uh, and then I go back and I listen to the music, watching, looking at the notes. Yep. Because um, yep. I can't, I, I can't learn from the video, you know, I can't. I can watch the video, but I don't know that it's three forty-five second race. I can't. I can't make that yes. compute in yep. my mind until I can see yep. it physically written down. And so once I've, yeah. I've listened to the music with the notes, then I sort of have like a photographic image of the notes in my mind, and I see the pattern, and I can say, you know, this mountain is, you know, thirty-second short climb, and then you've got two and a half minutes and one minute, and I just know. Um, yep. And because I know the music so well, it just all falls into place. Yeah. No, I'm I'm similar with that, and I think that's yeah. Mm. Everyone learns in a different way. Yeah, there's some people that won't listen to the music until they're about to get on and teach because they've watched the video or watched the it's not a video anymore. Yeah, it is a video. Watch the video yeah. time and time again, and they've sat down and watched that masterclass and gone, yep, 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 yep. I know what to say. I know I've got it all. I'm identical to the way you are. Yeah, I would have watched mm. it. Yeah, just to sort of get a bit of a oh, okay. What's this all about? Yeah, cool. Okay, see the vibe, feel what's going on, but then the music was on my iPod as soon as I possibly could. Constant, constant. Have him in the car. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as you said, grocery shopping. You know, I'd be everywhere you possibly could between PC sessions or whatever it was. It'd be in my ears listening because I wanted to know that music inside out and back to front. Because if you know the music, as you said, and you know the highs and lows and beats and where things drop and change, you're pretty much going to be able to work out what the choreography is going to be doing. Yep. Yeah, I mean, so the one and especially... Things, you can often, well, it pumps to be like that as well. You can often guess what the, what the yeah. reason is. Yeah? yeah. Sometimes you get it wrong, but you, you know, you have a rough idea um, and yeah. then it's very simple. It comes together. I mean, I listen to the music. My kids, so, I mean, not so much now because, you know, they're older and they would have like, AirPods in all the time so they don't listen at all. But they're like, oh gosh, are we listening to this music again? <laughs> <You know>? Yep. <laughs> Is that your work music again? <laughs> <laughs> yes, deal with it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're used to it now. They're totally fine. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. How do you get across then to instructors, uh, newbies, um, the best way to, to learn music or do you let them find their way? Well, I think it's important to find your own way because everybody does does learn things differently. And I'm very lucky that I actually, I, I find learning choreography usually pretty easy. Like it's not yep. a, you know, I, it comes relatively net. Maybe I've been, because I've been doing it for a long time, I've always found... <laughs> learning yep. choreography not not overly difficult um but yeah i it, it all starts with the music i think no matter what your natural style of learning is i think if you don't know the music then it's it's probably going to be very difficult for you but you know maybe yep. you're a numbers person actually i don't think she'll mind me um saying this but i um i had a body pump day three recently um and once i gave the track allocations i had this young trainee say to me but when you've written track one you mean squats right and i'm like no track one is the warm-up and she was like i didn't know that i needed to learn it and i'm like oh are you sure because we always you know that's that's the thing now yeah Um, and she was the she was last and she was the last and she was um teaching the warm-up for the second time and um she had to cram the warm-up Um, in a very short space of time and um, she's a numbers person so she literally went four deadlifts eight dead rows eight squats and she actually managed to get it right just because that was her yeah Yeah. which is incredible right so yes um, I think that's a good example you know yeah I mean warm-up's like the hardest track in body pump too because you've got to (laughs) coach everything yes (laughs) yeah but uh, yeah, so find your style, but also don't be afraid to try different things, you know, yeah. like because you might think you're in this habit of, oh, I'm, I'm learning this great, but then you might go, you know what, when I watch the masterclass, that really cements that for me. Or, um, you know, when I, if I read the notes and I can see the pattern or I can, you know, I can memorize the numbers, you know, that, that yep. kind of thing can sometimes help. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like that. Because it's, it's, it's everyone learns everyone learns in a different way. And I think there's, you find what's right for you. You find mm. what's going to work and it's okay for it to change. Yeah. Right? It's okay for it to change halfway through. Just like yep. it's okay to break up with your program. If you stop 
liking it and you hate it yep. for some reason, it's okay. You're allowed to stop. You're allowed to move on to another one. There are so many out there. It's okay. It's all okay. Well, yeah, because, I mean, you don't no, you don't actually have to do this. Like, no one's, right, no one's tying your hands behind your back saying you must teach this program or you must teach group fitness. Like, it's a, you know, I know it's, I know it's work and I know everyone's, um, situation is a bit different, but I, I see it as a privilege and, a, you know, to, to get to do this. So um, I feel really lucky that I get to get up every day and wear my sneakers to work and live in active wear. And, you know, um, yep. so I think that that's an important thing to remember. If you're getting caught up in the little things that, you know, you don't actually have to, you don't have to do this, um, yeah. but you get to. And if yeah. you, if, if you look at it that way, you're probably going to have a much better time. Yep. And please don't put your negativity up on social media. Yeah. <laughs> Tony, there's a, there's a can of worms there. Don't open it, Tony. Don't open that one. <laughs> Look, it's, 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 I'll, be saying it, I'll be honest and say it's a bugbear of mine. There's that many Facebook groups that are out there that people will bitch and whinge and moan, that, oh, I hate this release or I hate this track or I hate whatever. If you don't like it, don't do it. If you're That's falling it, yeah. out of love with your program, it's okay to fall out of love with your program. You know, we evolve as people. The programs evolve as programs. You're not going to like something the same forever. You know, you, yeah. you, you, you're going to go through certain things with certain programs. Like, that's just life. So mm. don't shit all over it because when you do, you bring other people down. But there are other people that love it. Just let them love it. You don't have to. Yeah, okay, you're allowed to have your own opinion. But seriously. Well, it's going back to that whole you're not everyone's cup of tea thing, right? Like, just because you don't like this particular yep. thing doesn't mean someone else does. So if you don't like that song, someone else might love it. Or if you don't like that particular exercise, someone else might go, wow, this is the best thing I've ever yep. done, you know? And um, I think that's like, we're getting paid to be there, but the members who come to our class, they're actually, they're paying for that. They're making, they could be literally doing anything else with their time, but they're choosing to spend that time with us. And yeah. We, we don't know what's going on in anyone else's life, right? So you don't know. That could be the very best part of their the highlight of their day. That can be the thing they most look forward to. And if you walk in there and you're complaining or you don't want to be there or, you know, you're negative, like that's the best part of their day. And you've just spoiled it. shit all over it. <laughs> <laughs> and look, we're, we're all human and we have bad days too. Like nobody's, yep. nobody's perfect. Yep. But um, if we if we try our best and um, you know aim to just remember why you do this, like remember yeah. remember why you wanted to do it in the first place, and I think if you do that, you you yeah. know we do a great exercise in initial model training. You know why why do you actually want to be an RPM instructor? And you write down a whole bunch of reasons. And what often happens if people do that exercise properly is that that reason that they wrote as number one because they think is the most important reason often ends up not not being ranked yes. as highly as they thought. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and when you think about all the other reasons why you why you might want to do it, every time things get hard, you go, "But hang on a minute, that's not what I. Yeah. That's not the reason why I do this. So when I feel that way, I'm not going to behave this way. It's kind of like you know we talk about our why. Yeah. Like what's your what's yeah. your reason? Why do you do what you do? And if you come back to when things get hard, if you come back to that, it can change the way you behave or the you know. And I think that's something that we need, you know, most of us, most of us are in that space where we're, where this is a type of culture that we work in where we go, okay, why am I doing this? Um, did, am I, am I behaving in accordance with my why? Yep. On that, what is your why? Why do you teach? <sighs> well, a great segue you had there too, by the way. I love that. <laughs> pardon, sorry? A great segue into the next question <laughs> I was going to ask you, which was <laughs> your why. <laughs> so, yeah, you did well. <laughs> Um, my why is just to create a space where people feel safe to be wherever they, I just want people to come and be happy um, yep. for whatever their reason is. You know, I think often when we first start, we want to help people get fit or, you know, that is often very physical reasons, but now it's much more, you know, exercising makes us feel good because whatever our goals are in the beginning, whether we achieve those goals or not, we still come. So yep. I just want every, I want to create a space where everybody feels welcome because moving your body feels great. You know, yep. moving your body feels great. Feeling, feeling strong and capable feels great. Um, so I just want, I want people to have that opportunity. Yep. I just want them to love it. Love it like I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, another question then, which is what I've been asking a lot lately is, what do you love about group exercise? 
Yeah, and is that is that different to your why? Uh, look, I love the feeling um, of moving. You know, I, yep. I I feel grateful that my that my body is healthy and and can do what it does. Um, and it's really hard to. <laughs> I love the people. I love the music. You know, I, um, yeah, people, music, movement, all of that. Yep. Yep. I get it. I get it. <laughs> I, I, I totally makes, understand. You know, we could go so deep in this, and I think I was, you know, um, I, mean, I stole this from Matt Sadler, who I was talking to, you know, you know, I work with him in another area, and he's, yep. and he, he was saying, um, take what you do seriously, but not yourself. And I, you know, I'm constantly in that state of that it's just exercising to music. Like it's, it's, it's not Can that you say big that of a again? deal. Take what you do seriously, but not yourself. But not yourself. Yeah. So take Love what that. you do seriously, but yeah. not yourself. So yeah. yeah, it's not me. That's Matt Sadler where he can have all the credit yeah. there. Um, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it, and this is the hard part about our job, right? Is that it's, it's just exercising to music. It, it does, yeah. It's not that big of a deal. Like really. Yeah, <laughs> but also you can change. But also you can change people's lives. So no pressure. Um, yeah, yep. Yep. yeah. And so that's probably, that's that's the hard thing for me all the time is because I'm a very much um, a do the right kind of person. But then on the other hand, I'm like, oh, just come, I do. I don't care what you do. I'm just happy that you're here. So yeah. it's finding that yep. that balance yep. all the time between those two yep. two things. What's new in fitness? The Australian fitness industry news and commercial gym equipment suppliers website designed to provide fitness industry professionals with knowledge and information to make better informed business decisions. What can we change in the industry in group exercise? What can we change or what should need, what should change for the better? Um... I think, you know, group, I would always say that group, to me, group exercise is undervalued by the rest of the industry in general. Maybe not, uh, especially our, what we do, taken a little bit less seriously than, or there is a perception that it's taken a bit less seriously. So I'd love to see people appreciate how important it is. You know, we know that it's important for member retention in clubs. We know that people who, come to classes, hold their memberships for longer and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But then when it comes to the business side of things, it's like, oh, that's just group fitness or that's just group exercise and it, um, you know, so I think what we could do better is understand how important it is and, and, and invest a little more. I think um, the, maybe the smaller boutique type um, offerings that invest more in their people, in their equipment, in their technology, um, that's that's the way the world is going now. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's something to that we need to start thinking about if we want to stay relevant. It's funny you say that. I was reading an article um, this afternoon about group exercise and and how the industry perceives group exercise and how a big box gym sees it very differently to a boutique. Big box gym, our PT gives me money. There's more, I'm going to put more money over there in PT and more attention on PT or, you know, I'll put more attention in getting new you know, sales. Uh, so we'll put more money on attention into membership consultants. You know, they don't see the proper value of group exercise because it's still seen as a cost center. Mm. They don't see it as a retention tool. They don't see it. Now, all of us that are involved in group exercise, we definitely see it as a retention tool. We're in front of them. We're in front of the, the, the people that we are helping to retain day in, day out. But mm. higher up the food chain, as you get higher up into management levels, they've obviously got targets set that is all monetary based. Yep. And so why you can't specifically uh, – put a value on what group exercise does for your business as in you can't really sort of go, Oh, yep. I had X amount of members and these X amount of members are just here for group exercise. You can in a boutique because mm -hmm. that's why they're rocking up because they're just doing group exercise. You know, there, there's, mm -hmm. there's the, the industry needs to look at group exercise and really hone in on what group exercise does for us. Not only getting people to move in groups, we know, as you said, all the, all those stats about, you know, people are, hang around longer and attend more often all that kind of stuff in groups it's it's 
it, we've got to try and work out some way to show a monetary value on an individual person coming in to group exercise for that club to be able to go, oh, yeah. oh, okay. So I had I had twelve hundred people come through, and all those twelve hundred people have that value for those twelve hundred people is X. Wow. Okay, that's what Group X is valued in my club. Holy moly, that's huge. You know, I think that as you, you, what you're saying is that that perception needs to change big time. The industry needs to look at Group Exercise in a complete different set of eyes. But I think it's going to take a long time and mm-hmm. a lot of people to get that message across, so that that club owners and managers really start looking at, you know, oh, it's not just costing me wages and program fees every mm-hmm. month or every week. Yeah. There's more more to it and i think we need to yeah somehow in the industry we all need to as group x instructors and group x managers and you know those that are in heavily involved in group x we need to get that mm. message out and let's preach it daily to say oi yeah yeah you know we're a value over here we're not just that cost yeah absolutely yeah because the value yeah. we know the value it's just helping everybody to understand that i don't know what the answer is but um and, yeah. it's, not a, and it's not a new question either you know, it's, no, a, I think it's, just, yeah. it's one that we need to, I think, continually pose and continually get to, to the owners and managers and clubs to go, okay, what is group exercise worth for you as a business? Yeah. Mm. What if we took it away? What would happen? Mm. Yep. Yeah. Look at those clubs that have actually had group exercise and that removed it. Mm. What's happened to their business? Mm. Yeah. Attendance has gone. Yeah, cool. We know that. But membership levels just drop. They just, you know, disappear. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, there's, there's probably an entire podcast series on that topic and we'll wrap uh, <laughs> we'll, 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 it up at the moment. Sure. Uh, what, is, what does the future hold for you? I mean, you know, you're, you're 21, so you've still got years and years mm. ahead of you. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> are there, are there, I mean, there's new programs that Les Mills have brought out. Are you looking to train up in new programs? Are you looking to diversify the programs you're currently teaching? What are your what are your thoughts for the future? Yeah, well, I'm actually doing strength development uh, training in a couple of weeks, so pretty Excellent. excited about that. Um, yep. But out, outside of Les Mills, um, for about 18 months, I've been teaching reformer Pilates. So I teach a lot of reformer Pilates now, um, and I cool. kind of joke that that's sort of my retirement plan. <laughs> because, <laughs> um, I mean, yep. look, you're going to have to pry me off that RPM bike, like I, yep. you know, like. <laughs> You will have to get me off there kicking and screaming. I feel like you can teach RPM pretty yes. much forever. Um, you can, yep. Um, so, yeah, that's, you know, I don't have any plans of, um, you know, dropping anything. I teach quite a lot of programs. So, um, yep. but, yeah, I teach a lot of reformer now, and that's been a really nice way of um, utilising the skills that I've got, learning new skills, and it's sort of a big circle, you know, that's teaching me things that I can then take into my core class, and then there's things I know from core that I can use in my coaching in Reformer and um, yeah, that's also, you know, it's very modern and it's very popular at the moment. So um, there's quite a bit of work out there and, um, but it's really nice to, to sort of both sides of the coin. I absolutely love um, working out with people, but it's also really nice to be able to give them my sole focus and spend time with them um, one-on-one in that space as well. Brilliant. I like it. Mm-hmm. Hey, if there's one bit of advice that you want to pass on to instructors, mm-hmm. what would it be? Ooh. I think um, be yourself. Um, I know we've already spoken about this, but you know, it, it, you're not going to attract the people that you want until you're actually being until you're being yourself. And so, not being afraid to do that, remembering that. You know, maybe not everyone is going to like you, um, and that's but that's actually okay because that's that's normal life. But if you if you're being the best version of you, yeah, if you're being, you're not acting, you're actually being yourself. Those little quirks that you bring to the table are the things that people come back for. Um, you know, and that's a, like so. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I, I sing in my classes. And um, it's sort of what I've, I'm known for, right? Like, oh, that's that instructor who sings. And when Ian is doing track allocations, he's like, oh, I chose this one because I, you know, I knew Christy would sing it. That, you know, I always remember, you know, back in the day, the choreography notes used to say, this is a great track to sing along to if that's your thing. And I'm like, oh, that's my thing. Um, yes. <laughs> but uh, I'll never forget um, finishing a class one day and going to write my numbers in and the receptionist being really scared and saying, 
really, I don't know how to say this, but um, I've had some feedback from a member and I was like, okay, yeah, sure, what is it? And she said, oh, because this member just walked out and said, oh, I really, I really don't like that instructor's class because she just sings way too much. <laughs> you know, but then I would say on a weekly basis, I have someone say to me, oh, are you a singer? Or, oh, I love your singing. Or, so, you know, like it, you, you just do what feels good for you even though it's not about you, it's for them, but it can't be for them if you're not being true to yourself. Yeah, mm. so true. I, I was a singer as well. Yep. Mm. I yep. I would love to sing along. And, you know, I'd be saying to some people, I'm the one with the mic, so shut up. You yeah, know? I mean, what, you want me to coach? I just wanted to, yeah. you know, do I have to coach or can I just sing I'm this just whole sing. thing? I can coach and sing. You know, I can sing the coaching if you like. Yeah. So, uh, no, I... I was just, I appreciate that. And I think it's, it's, it's a, your message that you're getting across there is, is spot on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, I appreciate it. I like it because it's, it's, it's the honest, the honest bit of truth, isn't it? Just be you. Mm-hmm. Let it fall yeah. into but place. You know, be... feel all great, feel all the great cues from the people that you admire. Absolutely. Yes. Yep. You know, I mean, it's not stealing, it's sharing. Um, <laughs> but yeah. You know, take all the best bits of, of the people that you admire and then just, Use that in your own way. Yeah. And also your IMT trainer will know if you're saying exactly what's on the masterclass because we'll remember. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, there can only be one Glenn Ostergaard. Please don't try and be Glenn Ostergaard. Be you. (laughs) Say what he says, but be be you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Christy, thank you so much for coming on and sharing some time with me, man. I've I've I say it to everyone, but I love it. I really do. I love doing this. I love sitting down talking to people and everyone's got a unique story that that uh they're able to share and and I've enjoyed hearing yours right from the early stages of um so roller skating to uh to you know <laughs> what you're doing now as well and singing in classes. So thank mm-hmm. you for coming on and being a part of it. Oh, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,